Good afternoon and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Town uh, Meeting. Uh, we have a, a select board, Board of Health meeting for April 17th, um, starting at 4 p.m. This is at the main meeting room, the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being current, uh, held remotely um, with adequate alternative means of public access and where required, um, public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Um, if you're web browsing, you can um, use the URL uh, www.anymeeting.com forward slash 692-109-034. There's a dial-in number, which should be on the screen for people watching, um, is area code 206-331-4836. The PIN number is 707715-POUND. So welcome in anybody that's on the line today. Um, let's see, so uh, call this meeting to order. And our first moment, um, first item we we're gonna talk about is just the COVID-19 updates. Um, we have a section here, residents letter for travelers for self quarantine. Um, I just wanna say everybody is doing an amazing job. Deerfield, I think right now has uh, St same or same, same two kids that we've had in the beginning of March. Right, and I think they have they've, they've recovered they've and they're recovered back and at work. We're good to go. So we had two, yep. um, still at two. So uh, I know surrounding areas uh, are still low. Um, Greenfield, obviously, with a bigger population, is is is, is larger. Um, but everybody has been doing a very very Excellent good job, job and happy. Everybody supporting local businesses and. Things are, things please, are happening. please don't stop. Yes. You know, keep everyone is healthy, and we've had no new cases. I mean, it is circulating. You hear once in a while people are being sick, and that's why we're having this community letter and stuff like that. But quite honestly, we are being. Everyone is doing wonderful, and we just need you to keep doing it. And yep. I know everyone's getting itchy. You're getting hair that's sticking out. And, <laughs> you know, you want. <laughs> I need to see the salon. I yeah. know it's we'll just like, there. but everybody is healthy and nobody's in the hospital, and it just is really wonderful. So please. And behind the scenes, we're planning a lot for, um, you know, what we do when we start to open up. You know, right now we don't have the testing to support that. Of course, we're still under the governor's order, but at, at some point, life does move on. Certainly different than we were before, but we, we are. Uh, thinking about ways to be reactionary, to be able to, you know, pr proactively go out and, um, you know, if, some, if there is a flare up here and there, how we're gonna, how we're gonna test for that, how we're gonna uh, do contact tracing, all of that stuff is kind of going behind the scenes, and we're still trying to work out how we have meetings, public input. Right. April twenty third is the last day for the red cap, which is the student volunteer system of contact tracing and it will start being the community tracing collaborative with the academic partners and um, it's much more professional in the sense that they're gearing up for the long haul so I I don't know how that we're trying to figure out how that's going to work with us but this community tracing collaborative is is supposed to be really Mm -hmm. community friendly and we're going to try to have some kind of structure here that works for them but um, it's a relief to say that we've sorted out the community um, county uh, communication finally mm -hmm. the fourth rendition was lucky not the third <laughs> the fourth right. but no, I think we're all set now we're, we're you know we're settled into Monday calls for our frontier EDS and we're talking about the issues and how we're collab working collaboratively, how we're working with the schools, the senior center, and keeping mm -hmm. updated. And I mean, it's just people are really stepping up to the plate. And so thank you as a community. And if you have any problems, all three of us, you know how to get in touch with us, mm -hmm. one of us, or Casey. Casey, Jen, everybody. everybody uh, Barb, if, everybody has been doing an amazing job. Right. You, you know, the people who work for your town have been working overtime non-stop um it doesn't matter any any department any people that work for us have been um doing such a good job working very very hard in complex immense changes you know 
these are changes that typically take 10 years to evolve and they're happening in a day or two and a week's time I and know. it's you, trying to get your head around some of the laws and how, how that impacts all the other things that you're used to doing for the last 20 years it's completely different um, and um, I'm just so proud of all the people that work for the town of Deerfield and the residents and how they're stepping up to make it happen um, and try to make it as seamless for everybody else. Well, oh, just to update, uh, as people saw and maybe on Facebook and town website, we do have a drop box out front now. It's bolted right to the wall at the front of the police station's office. So if you had something that you would normally walk into the clerk's office, you can, you, instead of mailing, we'd still love you to mail or pay online, but you can come in and um, drop it in that mailbox. and. Um, we get the mail and let it sit for a day or so. Yeah. So if you're planning to, um, you know, get it in right at the wire, mail it uh, earlier or pay it online because, you know, just with COVID, we're trying to let things sit a little bit um, so things that are might be on there kind of dissipate, and then we'll open it up. Uh, we receive it and stamp it the day it comes, so don't worry about that. But we were really. going to think about delaying taxes right a little bit that's a subject we're going to talk about on the 20 22nd second. okay yep. barb's going to exactly. visit with us on the yep. 22nd She's going to be okay with us and perfect kind of nail that yep. down so. all right i just wanted people to know that we're we are truly trying to work with that so do you have anything you'd like yeah, to add just, sure you know, please here again just compliment you know the job that everybody in town is doing you know, mm -hmm. town hall here um our highway department um uh, first responders um, you know, knock on wood, our first responders have been taking all of the proper precautions. Uh, the systems that the chiefs have put in place are really panning out quite well for us. Um, and I'm just very proud of them. Um, you know, you know, poor Kevin, you know, he gets all squared around and we have a winter storm warning for tonight. Yes. I know. Yeah. I know. I told him I have a rest well, weekend and then all of a sudden I realized he texts it back. Yeah. Not for me. It's yeah. going to snow. So, um, so if you see Kevin, probably stay 12 feet away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but thank him from 12 feet but, away. <laughs> but, you know, here yes. again. Um, Just duck your head. Yeah. Like Casey's doing. Go out yeah. and harvest your daffodils because they're yeah. going to all get yeah. smashed. <laughs> so, oh, no. yeah. Thank you. Thank everybody. Yep. It's, uh, you know, just everybody's pulled together and, you know, We've done a lot of things in this town to make this town a safer place, and uh, Carolyn has gone above and beyond over mm -hmm. the years to make sure that we had a lot of systems in place just in case. Yeah. And unfortunately, just in case showed up. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And um, I do, I do a shout out to the police to you know, you know, our officers are running 12-hour shifts now um, to be safe. They're running in one car for four days and. Yep. Um, Four days on, four days off. It's it's hard, you know. I mean, they're not used to you know a twelve-hour shift overnight. So I, you know, I saw Jen the other night, and she, you know, other morning when I'm coming in, she's leaving, and it, you know, I just want to thank them. It's I know it's a big change, and it's it's not easy, and I appreciate them doing that. Speaking of Jen, I wanted to just say we had a nice compliment from um, one of the uh, state judges. Yes. Sent a um, a message into Chief Pachurik complimenting. Um, Jen Bartik on all the uh, on the work that she presented for a restraining order in a domestic violence case in a neighboring town, um, but uh, the judge was so complimentary. Um, very rare a judge would call and um, compliment, but he said uh, out of all the things that people he's talked to, she was the most thorough and um, professional. In and a situation that's it, fraught with difficulty, absolutely. just from communication perspective. Absolutely. So it was really nice to hear. You know that. You know, we have that reputation, and, and that's because of our officers and Jen. So I want to thank her publicly for that. It's nice to know that we have a safe community, seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's um, a big deal. the topic here is the resident's letter for travelers self-quarantine. Do you want to comment on that? Do I want to Casey? comment on or that? I can do that um, it's want. basically a, a reminder to <laughs> folks um, on March 27th, Governor Baker addressed this issue in a press conference and reminded people that we're visiting from out of state to self-quarantine for 14 days, which is, uh, I think, which is par for the course in terms of anyway. maintaining your distance anywhere mm -hmm. at this point. Um, so 
Carolyn got in touch with me and we drafted a letter that we can, we we're planning on posting to the website as soon as the Select Board of, and Board of Health approved it. Um, but we did want to remind everyone that this is pursuant to that address the governor mm -hmm. um, gave on the 27th. And you see the signs all over the highway. And you do see the signs all over the highway. You, and we just, I just want to emphasize it's not because there is a problem. It's just that it's we a wanted safety to mechanism. do it in case mm -hmm. there is some issues. Well, what, you, and, what the Board of Health is, is trying to do is protect right. public health and safety. And mm -hmm. so we realize that there could be contamination if you're coming in and out of the state and so does the governor so we're just trying to remind people that the governor's address this and to help people be safe yeah yeah it's 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 like I said it's not because it's a problem per se people have been self-reporting and we've been mm -hmm. working on it no yes. problems but you know it could become more of an issue as this goes on and right I, I felt more comfortable if we had a formal letter and a formal policy and it was up on our website mm -hmm. It's sent around to everyone, you know. So the mechanism for that, there was one other comment I wanted to make was I would like to work with Lori to have her, an abbreviated version of this go out on the rave system. And I had thought about it, I just hadn't drafted it. Okay. When I worked in Ashfield, we had uh, Blackboard Connect, which is a similar reverse 911. Mm -hmm. And they always reminded me that to keep it as short as possible. Yes and to refer to documents and any other information um, to push people right. to those documents. So I haven't mentioned this to Lori because I wanted to take your temperature on that. Okay. Um, well, but it yeah. might be worthwhile to get that out to people if you want to do a wider spread. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. We can put this on the website and yeah. encourage people. People. I think them a televised meeting is going to help people understand where you're coming from. Um, well, oh, go ahead. No. Oh, I'll, so I'll read this and into the record, and then we'll take a vote on or take a motion to vote on it. Um, dear residents, this is April seventeenth, twenty twenty. Thank you so uh, very much for staying at home and protecting your family, friends, and neighbors from spreading the uh, coronavirus, also known as COVID nineteen. We know that isolation has been and will continue to be difficult. Staying at home is helping to flatten the curve in our area. It helps us all stay uh, to stay healthy. Uh, which is critical. Clearly, we all need uh, to lessen exposure. We also want to stay uh, close to family and friends. With the economy struggling, th uh, that may mean uh, consolidation of households. Um, we are concerned, however, about a higher risk of exposure to COVID-19 to everyone through travel. So pursuant to the Governor, Bacon, uh, Governor Baker's address and advisory on March 27, 2020, we counsel residents that uh, may be hosting relatives and family and, and friends from out of um, state to self-quarantine for 14 days. Uh, we are very aware that this may be difficult. However, it is paramount that we all work together to protect the health and safety of all, Deer, all residents of Deerfield. Thank you very much for your cooperation. We look forward to seeing you soon. Stay uh, safe, stay well, and stay home. So this is, again, generally if you have family or friends coming in to visit from out of state, um, just if you have them coming here, please know that we ask you to stay home for 14 days before you're out and about. I make a motion to approve this. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I printed a couple copies out so okay. we can post yep. them. We'll do that. Sure. Um, so we talked about that. Reverse 911. So poor Lori will hear about it if she's watching TV right now. <laughs> it's okay. I hadn't gotten I mean, that far, but yeah, I, I, well, we really haven't had any problems, and people have been self-reporting. Right. I'm just we worried may not about need to do, it, do it right now. Well, we I, just, I just was worried that we might be overwhelmed yeah. at some point. We yeah. have not. That's fine. Um, you know, we have not really used the 911 system much at all. We've been trying to keep it for extremely it should be for emergency stuff. emergency stuff. It should be for emergency. So we it really came up. But yeah. I didn't want to push it because right. we shouldn't use it except when we really need to. Except, notify you know what, that would be a good idea is if we did this before Wednesday the 22nd. 
And then we said on the 22nd, if you did not get the call, then you are not signed up for RAVE. And would you please make sure that you have signed up? Mm. What if we did? So you are discussing a change in delaying tax deadline. Mm -hmm. Might be a that good might time be to a great test. Group it all oh, then together. you can group it together. Yeah, that's that actually That might better. be a great test. Yeah. If you do decide to do that, and that will be a conversation, Barb is going to join you yes. either by yeah. phone or yep. um, if she stays after. And then we could say, if you didn't get the phone call about the delay in taxes and the isolation, that's yeah. Then, because mm -hmm. then, you could use it as a test, basically. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember there I, were I know occasions people we did that with code red. Which, because there's a school one, and some people are signed up for the school one and rave one, and not mm -hmm. the rave or whatever. And yeah. we've had this discussion over and over again when we initially signed up with the code red. So right. Right. it would be very. I think this would be a good good. It's a good perfect. opportunity Actually, to test. That's perfect. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Good. We'll do that. So why don't we do that? Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So the discussion items we have the uh, Prevere purchase and sale. DCAM notification of property interest for approval and signature. Um, and this is the purchase and sale for the property on North Main Street yep. that we're looking to move forward with and use. Um, this is uh, the project that will come before the voters on the at uh, annual town at meeting. annual town meeting, whenever. <laughs> When annual town when meeting we do is annual town meeting, but this is that um, may come up too. <laughs> use, you know, th this is the project to we hope to use through the um, CPA funds to um, just kind of lay yes. this out to uh, to use uh, purchase a chunk of property on North Main Street, you know, just uh, ahead of, just north of the frontier. We plan to put um, athletic fields in, band shell. And kind of a, a a town park there, so mainly playing fields and expanding. We're right now we're, you know, we're busing our kids to uh, other towns to to play sports, and parents have to go and pick them up because the bus only goes one way and doesn't come back. And this will all be centralized right in our village and right next to our school. So the so it's a great project. There'll be a lot more about it, but this is the purchase and sale agreement for that contingent property. contingent upon town meeting vote. Of course, yep. Thank you. And there's four copies for signature if okay. the board's ready to sign this. So, um, Do you want a motion for that? Let's see. I don't see a motion here. Either, no, I did not I'm, prep that motion. That's I prepped fine. So the other motion. I just want to uh, look over this real really quick here. Much. You guys have been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, like description. so Maybe I'll just read a little bit of this so people understand what, what it's about. Um, so it's basically a contingency purchase, a purchase and sale for eight acres. Yeah. Is it eight so acres? it's on right. North Main Street. It's between um, the town of Deerfield and Deutsche Acres. 8 for um, acres. I've got hey, I have a good memory. 8.5 acres of land um, on Deerfield Assessor's map. 151 as lot one and in the Franklin County Register of Deeds at book uh, 2635, page two, uh, page 326. Um, and this is for uh, the amount of $272,000. Um, so, and then again, yes. Time and performance will be at the annual town meeting. So there's uh, four copies here. Okay. So um, does anyone want to make that motion? Uh, I'll make that motion that we approve uh, this for two seventy-two okay. or two hundred and seventy-two thousand. I better Have say that. I'll, I'll second that. Any further discussion? Uh, well, just to mm -hmm. let Please? the residents know that we're going to be looking at uh, applying to use CPA funds. Correct. Yes. 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 And grants. Uh, I know we're looking at a grant maybe for the athletic field. The after, recreation. You know, there's a lot grant, yeah. going along yeah. just for this purchase. You're right. Trying yeah. to fill in some of the gaps. There could yeah. be an option for a recreational grant. Yep. We're going to look um, everywhere so we can. Yep. John and John's notified <laughs> Jennifer. Yeah, we're going to be. We have a, a public comment. Hello. Who's on? Hey, the Trevor. Line? It's Rocky. Hey, Rocky. How are you? Where, where would be good? Where would the access be to get to this property once we get it? So, so uh, just to kind of 
lay it all out there. Um, so one entrance will be off of North Main Street. So if you went north of um, the Frontier, there's a couple of properties. There's a house kind of right next door, then another larger house, and then there is a um, there's the, there will be access before you would get to Hardy. There's access out there. We would put oh, in okay. a road. Then, um, you know, we hope at some point to negotiate um, land between this property and the actual athletic field to Frontier. And then so we're, if that can happen, we would have access through the back parking lot of Frontier, which would probably be a one way. We're looking at all that design. Would be safety kind of issues. Safety yeah. issues, you know, of kids and just so one way loop that would loop around from Frontier and into there or vice versa. Um, or maybe just access from anybody that's at Frontier over to there. So we're designing all of that. So we're hoping that eventually there'll be another purchase of land um, between this piece of property and Frontier to expand or almost double the athletic space that um, we have in town. You know, double the space that Frontier has. And but of course it'd be town property and maintained by Frontier. There's a lot, a lot to work. There's out, a so. lot of moving parts, and we don't have parts. everything nailed down. This is the first. Be this is the beginning of nailing some of those details yep. down. So it'll be a long, long process. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on the line? Nope. Okay. Um, so we have. Uh, we did have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Trevor McDaniel. Dave Wolfram. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Okay. So I will initial all these and sign these, gonna, but I can do that after. So the sign here tabs are where you have to sign them. And Every then, page has to be initialed. Okay. To purchase it. I'll do that at the end so people aren't waiting. <laughs> um, so that's good. Um, let's see. And then we have next item. Oh, was the, is that the DCAM notification as well? Yes. The okay. next the next part of that is a uh, Trevor has to sign the DCAM notification, which is the closer. The, Division of Capital Asset Management, we have to notify them that we have an interest in real property. It's part of the procurement process. Okay. Sounds good. Right. It's a little bit different process than we would normally do. Right. right. Normally, you'd put out a RFP for property or... This has a uniqueness designation it because does. of the... Location. The and location and... Um, how we would build this and you know, mm -hmm. how we would create this. Yep. So that's been filed with the central register. It, the DCAM notification needs okay. to go in. So Perfect. after discussion with council, she suggested I have you sign at the same time. Okay. Um, I know we've talked about that um, Frontier is, in, is gonna maintain it and stuff like that, which we is hope. lovely, yes. But um, I think before we go to town meeting, we should nail down um, what uh, the savings are potentially mm -hmm. to the operation budget. I mean, Darius can just yeah. talk about that because I, I, I feel like that's one of the huge attractions of this is that we aren't busing out of town. It's not that that we lack the space even. It's just that that is a huge cost. It is. And, and, and we're loading up the lawnmowers and going down and maintaining it down there. And yeah. So this is, this, this is going to have a huge impact on long-term you know, costs in cutting the operating budget. And, and just for families. I mean, I've and, talked and, to I some mean, it's families so lovely that, for that families, they're, you know, right. they, they normally kids might ride the bike to school, but they can't because they're going to be on a bus and then they got to get picked up. And then if the parents, you know, can't get there in time here, they can, they go to the library after or there's things to do, you know, they could do studying. I know. There. They're, and they're right here in the center of town. Safe a whole lot better. Stuff. Yes. I know. I mean, from, from, uh, just logistics mm -hmm. it's huge and then but the cost we need as well. To, well but we we should map out not just the logistics why it's so advantageous for people to want to have it here in town but also just there is the some savings. real cost it's a huge savings yeah, yeah no doubt. i mean we you know we talked about that having to maintain trailers and tr in a truck mm -hmm. and hauling down a lawnmower all that kind yep. of stuff so mm -hmm. i mean i th i think we should have more uh information information okay. mm -hmm. on that Yep, I wrote myself a note. And then, um, let's see, and then we have... Uh... So that's, the next thing is the MVP5 grant writing contract. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me that I did not get a vote from you guys to sign contracts. And so... For which? So I don't understand what you mean. For five, right, because we oh, have really seven. To on. sign contracts in general, things that are under a certain um, threshold. The... Best practices 
threshold for supplies and services is ten thousand mm. um, dollars. This is the contract for Chris Curtis to do the next round of MVP. MVP. And which I don't think we really settled on, did we yet? You settled on a couple things you wanted to pursue. Right. And so there's a conference call next week um, to. When was that? Yeah. It's, Chris, I, I got the notice, and I'm trying to think. Well, we were talking about, with Chris Curtis last Walking time road. on the phone, these items that we may want to track, which, right. which would be, and, and, and I don't think we ever really voted that we're going to move forward on five, but we could talk about that now and yeah, kind of move forward. but we did agree that we were going to hire him to do to, to do, do the grant writing things, to do yeah. at least two so things one of which was whopping road and the other which was and the, the other construction was... i think of these these parking lots because we had, we're looking at design right we're looking at design right now the problem with that is we don't know what we're going to have for money as matches so mm. some of these one of the things we would look at is whopping road engineering yeah. um that We've already, you we've already to hear put from in him. quite a bit. Right. We, the construction projects, we have to put in a lot more money. What you wanted to hear from Chris was what we would be looking at for costs for engineering. So right. I heard back from the engineer, and I'm trying to remember if it was, I think it was Alex at Time Bond. He wants to have a conference call. He's got some information, and he wants to share it. So Chris, Chris and I, um, I think Trevor yes. and Kevin, um, he wanted to have a meeting with us. And the other thing I think you were both interested in, or three, the three of you were interested in, was some of the climate resiliency work to be done at the high school with the yes. students. Um, so yeah, this is the list. What, the reason the contract came up is if we're gonna write the grant, there's a short turnaround time for the grant. Um, we need Chris's help to do that grant writing piece. The cost for the project or cost for the grant, uh, the grant writing contract is 3500 I think. Um, but it brought the question up to me because typically I would sign that contract, but mm. I didn't receive a vote for permission or delegation to sign contracts of up to 10000 right. That's why I wanted to ask. I'm not sure. Um, the other thing I is. Like, I think I'd like to look at all contracts yeah. before you sign them. Um, the other thing is, I want to make sure that. Um, uh, did you did you find out if if we had money in contract, um, you know our contract services to We're hire? Burning through that pretty quick. We are burning through that pretty quick. Um, this would probably be a transfer if we were going to do the, anything. Oh, we're right? already in no. transfer status just right. for but the I mean, north, just because on. of the well, north the Main one the, I, then I want to add to it is to see if we could get Chris Curtis to um, uh, find out how much he wants for writing up the because I think it's. It would be easier for him to do it um, the, for the recreation grant because that's up to four hundred thousand or sixty two. I think John's got a uh, got a lead on that, but I'm not sure what it is. I can't remember. It's, it's July fifteenth is the deadline. Right, but I think so John had a lead on help to get that get that recreation grant done. Hmm. No, I think he was thinking of Chris. Um, hmm. and 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 because uh, I had talked to him about we, I think we could put pull in some of our MVP. Kind of stuff because you could have, you could. I, I don't know if the kids are coming back in September or not, but we could talk to Stacy Chapley, you know, the science department over there, mm -hmm. because a, a National Association of Conservation Districts has a lovely pollinator um, curriculum. So, and it's it's online. So Stacy could maybe use that with Frontier mm -hmm. Kids, and then we could work on that property um, should the town go forward with it. Uh, to, to put in a rain garden and a pollinator garden and um, pull more water away from uh, mm -hmm. Bloody Brook and downtown, and uh, and that could be offset by the recreation grant. And and you can, if you if we have this, if we pull it in with the MVP program, I think we could get up to 62% of the entire project done, paid for more than you can go more. Right? More you can go more, more than the 400. I mean, you can apply for 400 that's every what year. John was talking about. Because he talked about something about What you about have to do is you have to pull it in. And, yeah. But you I think to go we, above that I think if, percentage. Mm. I think if you could, you could pull all this stuff together and make this really good story, and it would support what we're doing, and it would pay for most of it, I think. I, I mean, I'm just saying, there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
And it's, so I think it would be worthwhile a couple thousand dollars of investment to hire Chris to write the story because he's already geared to the MVP stuff. And, and I can get him the pollinator curriculum. We can talk yeah. to Stacy. We can, you know, pull everything together so that we could generate, I would think, so it would the be a time more than the question. maximum. I think we would need to have some help with the time frame because um, I don't remember what the MVP time frame is right no, now. No, 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 no. This would not be the MVP program. This would be, you would be supporting the MVP program, but you are actually applying for the money for the July 15th uh, recreation grant because you have, it's, it's still under Climate KD and the EE, you know, the EO, mm. EEA. But what you're doing is you're pulling in all our MVP stuff, you're dressing stormwater, you're dressing, you know, bringing in the students and all this kind of stuff. So what you're doing is, is making a huge pitch. And I think we could get more than our 400. Because you can go up to 62% in one year, you can go up to 62% of your project. So if our project is, say, a million, then we should, instead of getting 400, we should be able to get 600 and something. Right. But what we're talking about right here is figuring out what kind of grant right. capacity. Right. He jumped ahead on something that, else. That's, yeah, no, 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 no. I, so building a bigger grant, grant writing contract with Chris. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, um, it's two different. It would be two. You would still, I would vote two separate things. You would vote the 3,500 for the MVP program because that's separate and reimbursable and that's match that's our match for the program towards our program but this would be the we'd uh, have to get a budget from him on that yeah right. I, I, I think he budget. could put it we together also would need I have to say that whopping road culvert it has a big impact on five and ten mm -hmm. I think getting the engineering done for that would allow us to get to shovel ready and there's other grants that are out there that might help us for that oh definitely I think if if our, our hazardous I like the science plan. thing I do mm -hmm. and I think that could be a great right. way to build a curriculum but I really think we need to stick with trying to think about whopping road at least for the engineering and so Alex that's what Alex wants no, to no, talk no, this to is two about. separate grants. I know but this so contract, what, so it might mean that we're looking at two separate contracts for. No, Chris. we are. We're, we're it's two separate grants, two separate contracts. But the reason why there, it's attractive to have Chris do both is because he's he he's coming, yeah. to, tying I'm in, and it, and your story is so, yeah. is so reinforced. He's got a lot of background. So Chris yeah, is, yeah, that makes sense. I don't. Chris didn't give us a contract yet on this um, on grant five, right? No, we do right here. It's 3500. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I haven't seen it's it. In there. I'm it's in it, there. It. It's basically 3500 oh, for I every get to the right meeting. every time. I, think I was back in well, You were back, I was back one you were meeting looking, looking at what at, we talked about. I was looking at the before, list. Yeah. I'm like, where's the contract? Um, okay, so let me just look at this real quick. Cuz we ha you had discussed a, a couple of things you were interested we did, in seeing yeah. with him and that's why he sent the I contract. I just wondered, forward. yeah, I wanted to see how many things he's got in here. So it's basically it's about $3,500 every time he does one. He, yeah. he figures out how much time it's going to take. Right. Okay. But I, so the scope of work. But for the whopping road thing, we have already invested a lot of money in our right. engineering. Right. So we have maybe have already met our match on that. He just has to, we have to go back and look because we have, we did extra work under the Mill Village culvert, remember? Mm -hmm. We pay, and then we paid an extra twenty thousand on top of that to go the whole distance of that. Okay. So, because we did, you could use what we already did under the MVP program to like halfway up on um, two, five, and ten, and then what we did is we paid an additional amount of money for engineering because we remember we were trying to get that hazardous mitigation right money, but we missed it because we stu our stupid hazardous mitigation plan hadn't been. Approved. Updated, yeah. So now it's updated, and it was so late that, you know, now we have five years from 2020 instead of expiring in 24. It's going to right. expire in 25. So we're all set. So yeah, this is good. I'm good with this. It's April 20th through the April, yeah, April through um, June 30th for the MVP um, preparedness grant and the and other grants determined by the town it's an on a needed mm -hmm. basis so yeah um, yeah that works so we can fit both of them in there uh, so i'll make a motion to it, do it, dave do you have any questions on that no oh okay still you know it, we've got to talk about where the money comes from for that 
So. Yeah, but I think we've already, if you go, we can have Brenda sit down and we, I, I know we already have the match for the engineering, I think. Okay. Because we've already, we did, remember we did the extra on the Mill Village. Mm -hmm. And then we added another 20 to do additional all the way up to Wapping Road. Right. Because we were trying to get ready for that hazard I just mitigation. don't know if matches are retroactive. That would be my question. And I would Yeah, but the engineering, the, Curtis, Chris but the Curtis. engineering, what you're doing is you're, you're bringing the engineering to the table as, and so. Value for money. Well, we'll yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, the engineering hasn't changed. It could be updated for a thousand bucks more or something right. like that. And then you can just right. say, this is how much we put in, you know, whatever. Okay. It's just the 3,500. I don't know. Right. I don't know how much he plans to do for this fiscal year. Um, this this has to be done. But it, the MVP grants are the, the, their cycle is off anyway. The MVP grant. Yeah, this is April twenty th the, April twenty twenty uh, right. through June. <laughs> it's got to be done by June. Oh, June twenty twenty one. I got you. No, no. See what happens is it the, you ha it goes in. It's under this fiscal year twenty. Right. But what happens is it's awarded, and you have until June 2021. Gotcha. It, we won't have the award. We won't have the award until after July. So right. Probably after August. Yeah. With it, everything going maybe, on at the state maybe right now. Who later. knows? Yeah. Maybe later than that. She's right. Okay. But we because could organize, the state doesn't know where it is right now. But we could organize the engineering since we've already upfronted that money. Right. And we've already got it. So it makes sense to keep going with it. Yes. It's not so a So I make a motion that we approve this. I'll just wait for Skip to yell at me later. Yeah, well. Any further discussion? Uh, second? Yeah, second. Um, I'll yeah. second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, I just. Yep. Please. Um, just, uh, I don't know exactly how to word it, but uh, right. just authorizing Casey to sign it. Sign That's what contract. I mean. I think Diana has been signing some of these smaller contracts. That's why I brought it up. No, we did. We authorized Diana, yeah. so we'll so just authorize. Normally, you would as a chief procurement officer. I'm good with that as long as you uh, were aware of them. I just want to make sure that when you know grants come along, no matter the size, well, we, we just love uh, to I'm know what they say, are, and we get. Most of these are operational. This is the reason you're one of the reasons you're seeing this is because you guys had talked about it, and I wanted you to see what he was well, talking I, about. I, yeah, I mean, we've I've wanted uh, to be involved with every amount of grant, especially for this, because I'm always nervous about how much we're signing ourselves up for. Committing. This is just the this is just the grant writing. It's the actual dollar amount. That we have to pony up, and we're I want to sure make sure we're not sure what the dollar amount's going to be. That's for what I'm saying. So forward. all that right. kind of contract stuff, I want to see, because um, I need to know the what they are. Engineering and design, and we've yeah. already done a huge amount of a match on that. But but I still don't have a number of what that is. Well, no, project, and we won't have a number, so we'll bring probably, that back for discussion. The project is probably a million bucks, but we might be able to do it at some point. With what we really need the money. state to do is leverage their grants, mm -hmm. and they've yeah. been very I reticent to do that. Yeah. I know. The Stammers have brought that up three times. I'll have another conversation with Pat. I He's going to love me. We'll just, we'll just sort of figure it out. But then okay. Again, you know, what we're looking at is the authorization for a lot smaller dollar amount that Casey can do. Mm -hmm. As yeah. long as she's keeping us informed. It's not that she's yeah. signing a million dollar contract. No, I just ten thousand dollars. It would be up no, to the same limit yeah. that and if you're not comfortable with it right now, we can I'm circle fine. back. I'm fine. I just really it's want fine. to be um, notified of everything we're buying, I guess. I just want to make contractor. sure not everything, but I mean I, yeah. I, I go through every warrant. I look at every single thing. Right, we and you should. Do. Um, but one of the reasons prepared. that you have a procurement officer mm -hmm. is to make sure you're following procurement rules. And they're, the levels are pretty clear, um, but I get that that could be an uncomfortable place, so it we'll is. revisit yeah. it. But uh, just make me aware of it. That's all <laughs> I care you know, about. Usually right? we so what we're doing. I'm pretty in touch with what you're doing and where we're going, and I'm I'm fine with I, all of that. So I just want to yeah. know. I just because I'd like to be informed. Just, yeah, that's all. Yeah, I, I I think what's really important is that we organize. And uh, Casey, I know that you're wicked busy, but we need to organize as many s things as possible, be shovel ready. I agree. Mm -hmm. And and that means you That's know talking to Dave Prickett and organizing Dave Prickett and then organizing Chris Curtis and organizing Ty and Bond on mm -hmm. all these things. So we're like, as soon as money comes out, we can like start shoveling. 
I mean, we, our, our project should be like ready. We ha and that's where we were, we were not prepared back in 2000. I mean, everybody, everything happened so fast. Right, when MVP started, it started fast. Right. And it's followed a very strange cycle. Mm -hmm. Not Well, because not there's the no normal. money. It's whenever yeah. the governor has money. Right. And so, so. we don't know what next year is going to look like. I, I, so I we'll think this, see what I happens. think they're going to be like. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be no very money. limited, too. So, so just to clarify, the motion is to approve the um, contract for Chris. Um, Chris Curtis for phase five of the grant writing um, and to allow Casey Warren to sign the contract. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yep. Okay. And we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Carol. Dave Wolf from aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay, that is good. Um, and next we do have, let's make sure we have two executive sessions. Um, so I'm going to declare two executive sessions pursuant to menu, uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, 2. The select board shall enter into executive session to conduct strategy in preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel or con to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. And secondly, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Section 6, the select board shall enter into executive sessions to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair so declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the body. And I do declare, I have a second. Oh, go ahead. Declare I quorum. I do, do declare quorum. a quorum is present. And I would also invite Casey Warren into the executive session. You have a second? I have a second. Mm. Carolyn Ness, second. All those in favor? <laughs> Go. You have to decide whether you're going to come back into open meeting oh. or... Do we have anything in open meeting? No. Let me just look at the rest of it. Mail this. is the only thing you do have. So we have some oh. mail. Uh, oh, before I go into this then, so is, is there any public comment? Anybody on the line have any comment? We have no public here tonight, so anybody... We do have people on the line. We though. do have people on the line. Does anybody have a comment on the line? No comment. No comment. Well, thank you for attending tonight. So I guess we will we will adjourn in and come out of executive session and not enter back into public session, and we'll be done for the night. And I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Uh, um, snow. We do have yes, Trevor, snow. Come on. Yes, whatever. Snow it, tonight. It, it, Who it knows will, what Sunday will look like? It'll be like, right? like ninety Sunday, degrees. Sunday. Sunday. Like Sunday will be so nice. Sunday upcoming will be meetings. Nice. I'm trying to think. Our next meeting is is um, Wednesday. Is Wednesday the twenty second. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. All right. <laughs> uh, so. Um, yeah, we're batty. <laughs> yeah, we are batty, no doubt. It's Friday afternoon. Um, so we, be safe, so everyone. We Seriously. Have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Ness. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. And thank you all. Have a wonderful evening, weekend.